Hey y'all, N4 H and H here at the workbench, and I'm working on my cant paddle. Well, Doug, what's wrong with your cant paddle? Actually, nothing's wrong with the paddle, but I will show you here what I'm doing. The cable that came with the paddle it has a. There you go. There, uh, let's get that focus. So it has the uh, eighth inch stereotype plug on the end, and had these three wires. Well. I took it off because I've been having trouble with RF getting in through that cable. Well, I'll tell you what happened. What I discovered was, uh, let me get this down here on the work area. So I've got the paddle turned upside down right now. I was sending CW sometimes and um, my radio would be stuck in transmit when I quit sending. I'd have to power it down and power it back up. That was the FTDX 5000. And I, I kept thinking, what is different? Because I, my Bencher panel never, never did that. I mean, my Bencher BY1, I never had that issue. Well, it's not the paddle causing it. But this cable, notice, it's just a three-conductor cable, and it's not shielded. That green in the middle there, now this is the DITS, and this is the DAWs uh, wire, but that that is this cable is not shielded. So let me show you what I did. I ordered from Amazon, uh, and if you're interested, I'll, I guess I'll put the in the description of the video here, I'll put the cable uh, in the description. And um, you can order one, but it, it ordered a six foot cable that has those two ends, okay? So I got an either or, you know, if it's a radio that uses a big, um, a quarter inch here, a key jack then I can use this one day on another paddle I guess but I'm going to go ahead and use this again because I have the adapter so what I did was I cut this six foot cable in half so now I have two pieces and that brings me to where I am right now I am soldering I, I went ahead and this came with this clamp here and I went ahead and clamped the cable after I stripped it back I'm going to use a shield for the ground here for the common and then um, I'm supposing that red is going to be tip and white is going to be the ring, but I'm going to verify that with my multimeter right now. So let me do that. So I'm putting this on the tip. Okay, there we go. There's the red on the tip. And now I'm going to touch this red wire. Well, wouldn't you know it, it's the other way around. The tip is white and the ring is red. Okay, well, that's fine. I'll tell you why that's fine. <laughs> because it just so happens that after I got this thing clamped in here, let me zoom way in. Let's see if I can get that in there. There we go. After I got this clamped in, I discovered that the way the wires were oriented, it would make more sense for the white to go left and the red to go right. And I was just gonna flip it, but actually now I don't need to do that. So um, I've got it stripped back, but I probably, I did strip it back a little too long. So I'm gonna shorten these a little bit here. And uh, and then I'll just solder them too. Yeah, so these, these ring tongs were already here. And let me warn you, if you have a camp paddle, if you unscrew this, it actually loosens up these electrodes that you're touching when you key. So you have to reposition those. But the truth is I wanted to keep the ring tongs. So I just used my soldering iron and desoldered the old wires from, uh, from those existing ring tongs. So now I'm just going to measure over here. Let me get that in the camera there, camera view. Okay, so you see what I'm going to do is just take this white wire. I could probably tuck it back, but I don't want that. I don't want that sticking, sticking, creating a bulk here. So I'm going to shorten it uh, to about there. And re-strip it. And I'll do the same thing to the other one, just using this one as a guide. Let 
and then I'm going to tin those. Always a good idea to tin before you solder. And you want to heat the wire. And you might be thinking, hey, Doug, you cut those a little short. Yes, I did, because look what happens when you put the the solder soldering iron to the wire. It melts the insulation back a little bit. All right, now that's going to be ready to be secured. I don't want to melt my rubber uh, foot there, so I'm going to turn this a little bit. And the camera's in the way of my soldered iron. And remember, when you're soldering, you want to heat the surface and let the solder melt to it. I could have done a better job than that, but I'm a little bit in an awkward position here with the camera. The red one, oh, you didn't get to see that. Let me pull it back a little bit. There we go. The red one, I was able to get a little bit better. Better looking solder connection there. I wasn't so strained. Um, the angle was wrong for the other one. Yeah, it'll be okay. Uh, that bugs me, though. Let me see if I can flip it this way again and get a better angle on it. Okay, got it that time, and you couldn't see that one either. Uh, we so well, so zoomed in, but anyway, though, so better looking solder connections there as well. Okay, I'm zoomed back out now so you can see a little better. And the final connection really is just the, uh, the shield. And I've debated whether to put some heat shrink on this, but man, it's such a small run. I doubt that I need the heat shrink, but um, I'm going to go ahead and twist it a little bit. And then I'll, uh, yeah, I think I'll put a little heat shrink on it. Bear with me a moment while I get it. I've got some here in a box. It's a little bit too long. Oh, here's a perfect piece. It's cut off from something else I did, so it worked out to be just about the right. I think that one will do it. That should be about the right size and length, diameter and length. So I'm going to cut this right here and slip that heat sink over it. And now I'm going to tin that. Let me see if you guys can get back on that. Okay, so you see I've got the heat shrink slipped over it. I'm going to go ahead and tin it with the soldering iron, which is going to heat that wire. And that will probably melt the heat shrink to some extent. Okay, and now I will tell you what, before I solder it, I've got a I've got a heat shrink gun here. It's like a blow dryer on steroids. I'm gonna plug it in. And go ahead and hit that a little bit. That'll do. All right, and finally, the final wire will be soldered. I cut it just a tad long, but that's okay. I'm going to uh, tuck it back here a little bit. I'd rather have a little slack than be too short 
because too short will pull on the connection in in the event that uh here we go in the event that the uh, wire were to pull out of this here but i think that's pretty secure so there we go my cat paddle has a shielded cable now and uh well i'll let you know if i have any more trouble with rf uh, getting into that cable and keying my transmitter hey thanks for watching videos on my channel and uh if you would stand by for 32 more seconds i want to recognize five of the long hauler patreon team members who helped bring these videos to you without their financial support backing my channel i wouldn't be able to do this i mean it's no secret there's not much money being made with youtube ads uh it wouldn't it wouldn't pay the expenses at all so these long haulers make these videos possible. So if you appreciate these videos, please stay for 32 more seconds and watch as I acknowledge five of those Patreon team long haulers. And hey, I invite you to become one as well. You can help ensure that I can continue to bring you these types of videos. And uh, hey, thanks again for watching my channel. This is N4H&H, Sing 73.